All right, a new study says the stress of the COVID pandemic appears to have actually physically changed teenagers' brains, aging them faster than normal. Let's go to our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who joins us. Is this like from staring mm. at screens and phones? What, why did this happen? Stress. Well, I, I got to tell you, first of all, you know, I have three teenage girls at, at home. So, yep. you know, we saw this personally. And um, now we're, when I was starting to understand and get a better idea of what exactly was happening to teenagers and get a good idea of what was happening to their brains specifically, a lot of it's what you say. I mean, it, you know, it was the uncertainty of what was happening during the pandemic, but a lot of it also was the, the um, sort of reduced social structure of being around friends and the social development that simply happens by being around friends and other people, you know, during your teenage years in particular. We know there's been lots of what are called internalizing symptoms that develop. People had increased rates of anxiety and depression. What was so fascinating, even before the pandemic, there was a study going on where they were looking at adolescent brains, doing these MRI scans every couple of years, trying to understand how brains change specifically during that period of time. And, and so they had these studies already underway. Pandemic happens. They continue the study. So now they can look at brains before the pandemic and then during the pandemic. And what they found was, was pretty staggering. Let me show you here on this, on this brain model, if I can. Um, basically, they showed that the brains aged much more quickly. What does that mean? Hmm. This area of the brain over here, which is called the cortex, think of that like as the bark on a tree, the outer layer. It got thin, thinner. That happens with age. It happened much more quickly during the pandemic for these adolescent brains. That's the area of the brain that's responsible for executive thinking, for example. At the same time, you look deep into the brain, areas over here, which are responsible for your ability to regulate emotions, for example, they aged more quickly as well. So all these things were sort of happening simultaneously. And, and you know, it was something that they could actually study in these children because, again, they had these scans before the pandemic and then again at least a year into the pandemic. So teenagers, we know, Sanjay, is, you know, they like to rebel, right? And so they spend a lot of time with their parents, which I think was constricting for them. And usually how they sort of gain independence is through sure. their friends and sure. the camaraderie that they have, right, these relationships. But my question, right. my question question is, look, I, I don't think you can reverse it. I mean, you're, you know, you would know better than me, but how can you, can it be normalized now? How long does it take at least to go back to normal, if, if you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, so Don, you know, the, it's interesting because there are some things in life and in, within medicine that just are without precedent. We don't really have a lot to base this on in terms of what is likely to happen in the future. What we can say is this, is that the, the types of changes that were seen in the brains during that time period within a year, so a short time period, the end of 2020, they saw these changes. They typically take years and years to develop those types of changes. And they're typically associated with what are known as adverse childhood experiences, meaning witnessing violence, witnessing things that are really traumatic as a child. Those are the types of things that typically lead to these sorts of changes. We saw them much more quickly within a year. They, it may be hard to read that screen there, but basically you saw more what are known as internalizing symptoms, anxiety, isolation, depression. Mm -hmm. You didn't see an increase in what are known as externalizing symptoms. Those are, um, you know, rule breaking, aggressiveness, violence, things like that. So that was something. Your question, how long does it last? We don't know. I mean, could there be a reversal of some of those changes? Perhaps, and that is the hope. I mean, the, the study is going to continue for that very reason. I guess also the, the follow to what Don is saying, you know, can you undo it basically, is now that kids are mo most, mo most of them returning to school, they're back around their friends, they're not having the same kind of restrictions at, like at the height of pandemic, does that, can it help, if it developed as quickly as it did, can it help now that they're back to normal and easing that faster? That, that, that is absolutely the hope, Caitlin. I mean, you know, but I, I want to be careful here because, you know, we are seeing something that is without precedent. So to try and extrapolate what this might look like in a couple of years, we didn't have MRI scanning during the last pandemic, 1918, 1919. What we do know, and I guess this is a little bit optimistic is in a good way, is that is that after the 1918, 1919 pandemic, there was this earnest return to normalcy. There were the roaring 20s that came back after that 1918 uh, flu pandemic. Might that happen here as well? And might we see that reflected in the brains of these adolescents? That, that, is, that is certainly the hope. Yeah.
Doctor, thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Good Thanks to see Sunday. you as always.